Hey, DF, why do you think people keep saying that, quote, we don't need any more graphical improvements, end quote, or they, again, open quote, they don't need to improve the graphics at all because they look life like real life already, end quote. Are people ignorant of what real life looks like? Uh, <laughs> Are people just not very observant? Do more people just need to watch DF? Well, on the latter point, definitely. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah uh john what do you think about this one i mean you know we are reaching the point uh, where there are sort of diminishing returns on rasterization you know you can only, you can you can throw a, as many as many polygons as you like uh, um, a character model for example um but you kind of don't need to unless you're in photo mode or whatever um, well i think he's talking more about just there's other stuff right if you look at when he says real life, if you look at high ends offline CG rendering, there's always a target to move forward towards. Yeah. Although with CG rendering, there's a lot of shortcuts taken that stuff that's like not on screen or something mm. that's really distant from there. It's often still done in low detail, interestingly. Uh, but I think the problem more than anything is like, I think when people say that they're like, okay, I think these graphics look good enough. And I kind of get this in a sense because I do feel like we've reached a point where every bit forward, every little leap forward for a lot of these different elements comes at an insane expense. Uh, just the amount of time it takes to create this stuff, stuff like lighting and, and GI and ray tracing, I think has been pretty awesome because it, it does not require nearly as much like investment on that front, but to get to the extra levels of detail and fidelity that actually matches like, it's close to real life. I think that's just, I, I just don't see how we can get there without budgets and s such continuing to explode even further. Like they're going to have to leverage a lot of uh, generation stuff where you're actually generating things in real time, not necessarily AI, but like, you know, procedural techniques and other things that can kind of simulate real life elements. But I uh, just getting to true like photo realism, man, that's, that is a giant leap, and I just don't. I mean, I assume we'll eventually somehow maybe get there, but is that ever going to be really viable for game creation? I don't know yet. Mm. It's still a long way away. What do you think, Oliver? I mean, obviously, game graphics look great already. <laughs> I think if you go back to any of our respective uh, youths or earlier periods, obviously, game graphics have progressed uh, enormously since that those periods. But, but I, I tend to think that people put more value in graphics and they tend to kind of intellectualize because I think the feelings that games evoke are really closely tied to their visual presentation and gamers are kind of drawn to those more lifelike visuals and they are drawn to that kind of more exciting visual presentation. And I think that's part of the appeal of a game like, for instance, Battlefield 6. Like if you look back to right. Battlefield 3, for instance, like that's a game that I could play today still plays great, still feels great, still feels reasonably modern in like a good first person shooter multiplayer game. And I think people are excited for the new Battlefield in large part because it does look so dramatically better than Battlefield 3 or like the Battlefield games of the past. I feel like that's part of it, even if they aren't like looking at the image and saying, I appreciate it because it looks more realistic, it looks more vibrant, it's giving me that kind of CG kind of impression visually. Um, I think they are actually perceiving that in the moment to moment and appreciating that and just ascribing that feeling to something else. A lot of these comments come from social media posts where, I mean, the, the, it was actually your comment on Battlefield that sort of highlighted it to me, where, you know, somebody posted some footage from Battlefield 3 and it was like um, this was running on a PlayStation 3. And, um, yeah, you know, Battlefield 3 was a good game for its time, visually quite impressive for its time, and there were certain elements of battlefield that still you know hold up today even the playstation 3 version but it is the case that um if you actually go back and play those games they are in a you know they're very much of a of a last last gen sort of uh, look and feel mm -hmm. it's always kind of like gray skies and uh reflective floors that seem to end up in those kind of posts have you noticed <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like flat lighting and, and and lots of shiny floors that seem to turn up there. But it is the case, and it's similar, similarly the case even when you're looking at YouTube footage today where the games just look so much better in person and there's some sort of crapifying filter that um, streaming video does to games that um, 
uh, you know, sort of diminishes the, the their impact. Probably, you know, as fidelity increases and streaming quality doesn't, it kind of does a disservice to those games and is almost a leveler with with what you might have seen before. I think, you know, graphical fidelity is just going to get better and better. And, you know, next generation, it's pretty clear where we're going. Mark Cerny's basically told us, it's all, you know, only so much more we can do with rasterization. There's so much more we can do with ray tracing and machine learning. And that's where the gains are going to come from. And that's what NVIDIA is taking point on. That's kind of the way it's going to be.